Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the channel. And before we get into today's show, my mind was absolutely blown yesterday as I was decoding the 2007 Body Snatchers film. Now, this was weird because when I uploaded the scheduled trailer on this channel, we had a manual review, which means that the producers of this film manually reviewed this and flagged it. So I pulled it down and uploaded it somewhere else, which you'll see in the pinned comment and the pinned chat area. Many of you have already seen this. I don't know how long it's going to be up over there, but you definitely want to see this. We're going to try to decode this trailer uh, in a couple days on this channel. We'll see how that goes. But here are some screenshots from the film, the 2007 film, The Body Snatchers. And I can't even say the actual title, but it's very close to that. And I uploaded this on my backup channel, as I said, last night. Many of you saw it already. Some have not. These are the closing credits to the film. And as you can see, they show what appears to be a C-O-R-O-N-A. And in this film, this woman is talking to the extraterrestrials as they are talking about bringing a V-scene to market. She says, if you just cracked the new virus, how are you ready with VCs so quickly? Now, in this scene, and you'll see this in the trailer when we review this, the ET, it looks like a human, of course. He's a clone. And he's standing up in front of all of the pharmaceutical companies talking about bringing, bidding and bringing a new VC to market. And he tells the woman, hey, why are you asking all these questions? Do you want to be excluded from the bidding process? And of course, she quickly retracts her question of how they were ready with the VCs so quickly. You guys, this trailer is probably one of the most important ones I've ever done. They show how black folks are awake to this. They're the ones trying to warn everybody of how to avoid detection by not showing emotion, not taking the jab, and so on and so forth. So all that's in this trailer. Again, it's in the pinned chat. After this show, you guys can go check it out. But I was literally blown away with this particular decode. Now... Let's get into today's show. So, a lot of us came out early and we challenged the assumption that CV-19 was on every surface. Remember that? That was about probably February or March of 2020. And we saw these people running around with gloves and spray, antibacterial, and wiping down every surface. And we also had noted that the cleaning industry was making a killing. Billions in profits during this time. And this was all based off of the guidance from the C to the D to the C that scare people into thinking that CV-19 could survive on surfaces for weeks and weeks. Remember that? And could be transmitted seamlessly and easily just with a simple touch of a surface. Well, that was the fear factor that they were instilling in us early on to get the hooks in people. Make sure we're connected before we keep going with this. Now, what else has been happening? Well, we had experienced delays in service. Remember the before the actual shutdown, all the restaurants, planes, trains, automobiles, taxi service, Uber. They were spending countless hours spraying and wiping everything down. Remember that? And any channel or any outlet, independent media, that started talking against this were taken down. They were kicked off of Facebook. They were blocked. Channels were taken down. If you said anything to the contrary, they had the fact checkers out discrediting anyone that, that disagreed with this. Any claims against what the C to the D to the C said, it was called misinformation. Well, here we are full circle. 
And it turns out that we were absolutely right. Now, here's the update. They said in the hygiene theater. Let's read through this. It says it's time to unplug the sanitizing robots and put away the bottles of Clorox that seem to line the entrances to every school, restaurant, and supermarket wanting to advertise its safety protocols. While such protocols may be reassuring to anxious populace, who made the populace anxious? They did. With all their misinformation. It says they are not necessary. It says a revised guidance issued on Monday by the C to the D to the C. So this is the kind of article that you can show the people that were dogging you early on for saying this was a much ado about nothing and trying to discredit you is, wow, you should really listen to the authorities on this. And any thinking outside of that is dangerous. Well, here you can come full circle with this information to show that you were right all along. It is possible for people to be infected through contact with contaminated surface or objects, but the risk is generally considered to be low. The new guidance estimating that the chance of contracting the CV through a surface is less than 1 in 10,000. Look at the idiots. I'm sorry, but it just is what it is. People believing in man rather than God. God put us here on this planet. Surrounded by all the very same germs that are out there. Look, I understand. Look, if you're allergic to something like poison oak or ivy. You know, that's different. And, but this is crazy. This is overboard. This is psychotic. And we talked about that early on. How psychotic this is. And so here we're surrounded by friends and family who chose to believe government over common sense. And as a result, what has happened to their immune systems this whole time? They've been weakened. Because they've stripped it of the small doses of germs that we're supposed to have and supposed to be exposed to for our immune system to thrive. And this is what we were saying all along. And now they're telling us a 1 in 10,000 chance so that would make Slouchy a liar. These are the people we're choosing to believe to inject something into our bodies. So I'll put this in the pen common, of course. And let's get into this next story. Now, this story demonstrates that none of this is going away anytime soon. This dude spent 15 grand on his Disney trip only to have his medical privacy rights violated by some order taker, probably in front of an entire crowd of people, just because he did not allow them to check his temperature. Nobody, I repeat, nobody has the right to know your body temperature. Now, I'll admit, I walked into this one a couple times. They, they're they sly the way they do it because they don't tell you that your temperature is going to be taken when you sign up to go to some event or get on a plane or whatever you do. And then you find yourself in this compromised situation where you want to get to your destination or you want to do the thing you signed up for. And then they there's some order taker standing there with a, a wand or a beam shooting into your forehead. And you're, you're going, okay, what do I do in this situation? Well, this guy stood up and kudos to him for standing up. But look what happened to him. Now, they put these stories out there to try to shame people like this. All he had to do, look, it says in here, all he had to do was let us take his temperature. You guys, that's a violation of your medical privacy. This guy could sue them. And I totally get where this guy was coming from. He felt violated. It's like somebody pulled up his underwear tag from behind his pants and checked what size he was wearing. That's what tan, this is tantamount to being nobody has the right to know your body temperature. 
Let me give you an example. Not all people have the same body temperatures. Some people run cold, some people run hot. By checking your body temperature, which might already naturally be high, just because that's the way you are, you are signaling and singling out that particular person in a crowd, which can cause them undue stress, humiliation, and everything else. Could cause them bodily harm even if they have a panic attack. This is literally like the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers where they identify a person who is not complying and all the people in the crowd freak out and start screaming. There's somebody that's different and they start chasing you through Disneyland. This is the scenario that comes to mind of where all this is headed. Guy gets a beam of light shot into his forehead. His temperature is two degrees too high. He refuses to comply. Next thing you know, you've got people tackling him. And this isn't what happened, but this is the scenario that could happen in the future as people get more and more freaked out about this CV-19 and whatever else they want to throw at us in the future. Chasing him down through the streets because now we can't eradicate it because this one person is not complying. Chase him, get him, run him down, tackle him, throw him into a quarantine. We are literally living in this in invasion of the body snatchers. Look at this article is just chilling. Let's read through this. Oh man, let me let me make sure we're connected first. Everybody, I hate to even cover this kind of stuff. But we have to because this is where we're all headed if we don't stop this. They should be ashamed of themselves. This guy spent all this money and because he did not bow to their, you know, to their wishes, he's been singled out. A man who was arrested after refusing a temperature screening at Disney Springs in Florida told authorities he couldn't be told to leave because he had already spent 15 grand on his vacation. The man, Kelly Sills. A tourist from Baton Rouge bypass Orlando's attractions medical screening. See, they can't do this. This is illegal. This guy should sue. And I hope he's watching this. Because that's a medical screening. They don't have the right to do that. Those are your personal rights and privacy. And he refused to get his temperature check when asked by Disney employees, according to the report. Body camera video released recently shows. Sills refusing to leave when asked by law enforcement. See, law enforcement is enforcing this nonsense. Now, here's the thing. You're on private property, right? So law enforcement has to enforce that. But here's another example of the division of power as well. Everything is divided up. They divide all the blame between all of them. Between the presidents, between the senators, between the courts, between the this. You know, it sounds like a great idea to have checks and balances, but really all that does is divide the blame so that when you go to like get justice for something, you can't ever pin your finger on it. This is why protests are really hard to do because no one person has all the blame and they've done this on purpose. It's called intentional decentralization of power so that the anger of the people cannot rise up against any one person. I think they learned their lesson back in the Middle Ages when everybody knew where the king lived in his castle. Right? So they knew whose head to chop off when things got crazy. So let's keep going with this. He says, I spent 15 grand to come here. After a deputy told him that he was officially considered to be trespassing. Deputies and security manager at Disney Springs had approached Sills outside the boathouse restaurant. The report said he argued with security manager yelling at him before the manager told him he was no longer welcome at the park today. I'd be yelling too. I just spent 15 grand. A woman could be heard asking officers not to arrest Sills in the video. He's not listening, a man responded. All he had to do was get a temperature check. That's it. See how this works. These are the mindless zombies taking orders. 
How about all you had to do was not take his temperature? How about that? At another point in the video, Sills asked whether authorities could take his temperature before forcing him to leave. Someone responded that they would do so at jail. Sills also claimed to be a Disney stockholder at another point. Wow. So now he's in legal trouble. So there you go. So. What else is going on in the Twilight Zone that we call this world? Well, this headline alone, this next story, just made me laugh out loud. Because when you scroll down to the bottom of this story to give your feedback about how blatantly ridiculous this is. There's nowhere to put your feedback. It's just more mind control. Our goal is to create a safe and engaging place for users to connect over interests and passions. In order to improve our community experience, we're temporarily suspending article commenting. Well, believe it or not, they started suspending article commenting way back just before the spamdemic hit America. It's like they knew they were going to be doing a whole lot of brainwashing. Why J&J throwing out 15 million CV-19 doses shouldn't scare you. Wow. Let's read a little bit of this. Human errors at a manufacturing plant forced J&J to throw out 15 million doses. That's uh, probably about 35 to 50 million dollars, by the way of your tax dollars, of a CV-19 VC, enough to VC 7% of the adult population of the United States. The New York Times, which first reported the loss, called it a major embarrassment for the VC maker. But while errors with an impact of that magnitude sound shocking, here's the mind control, they're also a reminder that the US VC process is strict quality control measures designed to catch these products before they reach the public. VC manufacturing is complex with many potential points of errors. Oh, nothing to see here. Move along. Don't worry about the stuff that got through. Like with, what are we going to call them? Asteroid silica. No, don't worry about that. The fact that we missed that people uh, are bleeding out. From the inside out, like zombies. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about all the other times we lied to you. And hid stuff from you. And minimize our responsibilities. Mind control, you guys. Mind control. Now. What else do we have here? Sorry for the cynicism. I just... How are we going to get through to people, you guys? How are we going to get through to people? Sometimes people need to be, like, snapped awake. So, what is this next story? Well, this is the first federal mass vaccination site. And here's what this kind of infra infrastructure signals to me. It says, FEMA to take over mass vaca nation site in pueblo to increase cv19 immunizations three thousand people per day look at all these cars look at all the sleep people you guys unbelievable so it has now been federalized and fema is taking this over oh my gosh dinger the Colorado Rockies mascot, lower left, greets people lined up in their cars. So now they're mocking you. Dinger. Unreal. What does this kind of infrastructure mean? It means that CV-19 isn't the end. It means that Vaca nations will continue on for decades to come. This is just the start says the feds will take over the state's site, Vaca Nation, in Pueblo next week to ramp up efforts to get more people 
inoculated against the CV. The site to be run by FEMA will be located at the Colorado State Fairground, where Vaca Nations already are ongoing. Why do I call it Vaca Nations? Because Vaca in Spanish means cow. And their Vaca, the whole nation is acting like cows right now, going in for their Vaca Nations. Eight week pilot program, 3,000 per day. Wow. So, hats off to this channel. Everybody knows who they are. Because now, the people in the EU, very high up authorities in the EU, are now admitting that there is a link between the clotting of blood and asteroid silica. And even though this is not available, this particular VC is not available in the U.S. yet, the people in the EU seem to be wider awake than we are. And now there's a connection. And now we know that just because they say things are safe and effective doesn't mean you have to believe them. Now, I sense something brewing. I sense something brewing on a racial level because they're stuck. Because black folks as a whole are basically all in agreement that most of them will not be taking this V scene. And the powers that be have themselves a little problem that they created because they've so thoroughly divided people and have everyone so scared about race relations and offending someone that now they're going to look like the doofuses when they try to force this and start excluding Black people from daily life because they didn't take it. Black people will say that's racism and it is, but it's racism against everybody who doesn't take it, not just black people. So we'll be following that story as well. Now, here are some claims as to some of the effects that people are experiencing after they take this and i'll pin this in the pin comment as well some of you are asking you couldn't find the story well here it is daily mail physical effects that were more closely related to medical issues that seem extremely unlikely to be linked to cv include excessive blinking eyes changing color growing teeth and losing teeth weird so these claims are starting not to sound so crazy, aren't they? Because we know these people lie. Now, here's the last story here, and I'll be back in the chat. But it seems to me like we are closely and fast approaching the I Am Legend scenario where Dr. Crippen causes the zombie apocalypse by trying to cure cancer well now they're saying that wow since we were well, since we fast-tracked this new technology this mrna technology and it's actually working or they think it's working they have no long-term studies we're in the study right now they're like it's working it's working now we have a new technology we've never tested before now we can try to cure cancer this is exactly the scenario that happened in I Am Legend. If you guys haven't seen the I Am Legend films or decodes that we've done, you need to check them out. Dr. Crippen, and they end up calling it the Crippen virus in the film. We looked up Crippen. And look at this. There's actually a place called Crippen. Let's see if I can find it on the fly here. And it is a place. Let me see if I can find it before we show you guys here. Crippen. Maybe I can put Crippen map. But it looks like a crucified Jesus. It's unbelievable. 
Let's look up maps here. See, everything that pulls up is I Am Legend. Now, in the film, Robert Neville, Colonel Robert Neville, which Colonel means C-O-R-O-N-A, by the way. Neville, probably meaning devil. Oh, here it is. Is this it? That's British Columbia. Oh, we'll have to track that down. It's in the other... Um, Let's see if we can find it. There it is. This is Crippen. And this is what I believe they named this character in I Am Legend after. And there you see the crucified Christ in this place called Crippen. So this is what it was all about. I believe anyway. On the Elbe River. L means tree. I think this is means tree, Elb, and he was hung on a tree, was he not? Let's put it, let's type in Elb and see what it means. Here's the Elb River, but L means tree. Oh, it says here, first attested in Latin, name river or riverbed. Interesting. All right, let's go back into the chat here. Let's just catch up. We haven't been able to spend much time in the chat lately, but I wanted to present that to you guys today. We'll be back on here tomorrow. More decodes on the Matrix. We had a lot of uh, trailers we've uploaded that we'll do full shows on. And that's kind of the format on this channel for those of you that are new to the channel. If you ever watch a, a shorter video that's between five and seven minutes long, you'll see that that particular video is more like a trailer. It's highlights from clips of films that I've decoded. And later, we always do a full 30, 40 minute show on those trailers. So if you find yourself confused on the trailer, just stay tuned. We go live every single morning, except for like one day on the weekend or the weekend and uh, exactly the same time 8 45 Eastern Standard Time which is what is that 5 45 West Coast time all right wow and says the scorpion tail and I pet go too yeah that's pretty crazy huh Crip equals crib. Yeah, so that would be the manger, right? From manger to death. From his birth to his death on the cross. Now, a couple of you had asked me to look at this parade in Egypt. You guys, I didn't really see anything, to be honest with you. Um... A lot of people have covered it, so I don't like to... Uh, there's certain things I just don't cover, and so apologies for that. But um, I did notice something about the number 22, because there were 22 mummies that went through this particular parade. Now, it's possible that they are reanimating these mummies. That's possible, I suppose. But... Um, Let's go over some of the number 22s. Now, here's this is really weird. There was a Twilight Zone episode called 22, and it was episode 53. Now, look at the episode number. The product code is 666. So that's a little bit weird. Now, I haven't decoded this episode of the Twilight Zone, but there it is there. And look at the creepy clown she's holding. That's just very strange. Now, what's this all about? Let's read the plot very quickly. And this is pretty much all I'm going to do on the mummy parade. Because we can't really prove anything. Yeah, they moved 22 mummies. But where, why, and what was the significance of the date? I guess it occurred on April 3rd. The eve of April 4th. 
but let's read about this. Here's the opening narration of this episode of The Twilight Zone called 22. It says, this is Miss Liz Powell. She's a professional dancer and she's in the hospital as a result of overwork and nervous fatigue. And at this moment, we have just finished walking with her in a nightmare. In a moment, she'll wake up and will remain at her side. The problem here is that both Miss Powell and you will reach a point where it might be difficult to decide which is reality and which is a nightmare. A problem uncommon, perhaps, but rather peculiar to the Twilight Zone. Now, let's read this plot. She was hospitalized for exhaustion. And she suffers a vivid recurring nightmare in which she is awakened in her hospital room by a loud ticking of a clock. Now, this could dovetail into these 22 pharaohs. Says she knocks a glass of water to the floor, shattering it. We know water is a conduit to portals. And the ticking of the clock would be time, obviously. Then she hears the sound of footsteps in the hall. She sees a nurse half hidden in a shadow descend into the basement in the elevator. She follows the nurse down and finds the hospital morgue, room 22. The descent down the stairs could be descent into hell. The nurse emerges from the room and says, Room for one more, honey. Liz screams, flees the elevator, and the dream ends. Now we know that the elevators represent the reaving, the twisting rope of the elevator. And reaving is synonymous with portals as well. The twisting and turning this is why they show people in elevators either dying or time traveling. You see a lot of time travel or portal TV shows and films where they're going into different dimensions through the elevator. And that's why. Because of those reaving coils. So, um, there's this nightmare and the doctor suggests that Liz try and experiment in lucid dreaming and alter one detail of the dream to undo its hold over her. Specifically, to not reach for the glass upon waking. So, she tries to do this, but instead, the dream then corrects, it course corrects her alteration, and she ends up in the very same boat. So, there is the Twilight Zone episode, Flight 22. There's all these 22s, Flight 22, the taxi. Here's the closing narration. Miss Elizabeth Powell, professional dancer, hospital diagnosis, acute anxiety, brought on by overwork and fatigue, prognosis, with rest and care, she'll probably recover. But the cure to some nightmares is not to be found in known medical journals. You look for it under potions for bad dreams to be found in the Twilight Zone. So, not sure there's much to that. But there it is, the number 22. Now, they mention in here this number 22 is very significant. Here are the other uses, and I pulled them all up here. And the tarot deck, the number 22 emerges. Deck of 22 cards. All right. And it says somewhere in here about one being, these being the trump card. Oh, look. Some of the use of the tarot for cardomancy believe that the cards have esoteric links to ancient Egypt, the Kabbalah. So that's a connection there between the number 22. So there's something in here also about the trump card. Okay, it says in addition, the tarot has a separate 21 card trump suit and a single card known as the fool. So that would tie into that little uh, clown that she was holding this 22 card section of the tarot deck is known as the major arcana depending on the game the fool may act as the top trump or may be played to avoid following suit so there's the tarot 22 connection the hebrew alphabet also has a 22 connection as well the hebrew alphabet has 22 letters so that's interesting and what is this? The Sephiroth also has a 22 in it as well. 
22 connecting paths correspond to the spiritual channels of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Spiritual life force. So this could be some kind of resurrection of these cloned mummies. Now that we're starting to dig into this a little bit. So, weird, right? So that's the update on the parade of mummies. Let's go back in here. All right. Did I miss anything with that, you guys? I don't know if anyone's looked into the number 22 with respects to these mummies. But we just did, so right on. All right. Jesus is the door. Absolutely. The narrow gate. You don't want to go through the other door. You don't want to go through the down door, the wide gate. That will send you into hell. Seems like a whole lot of people are going through the wide gate right now. With everything going on in this world. All right. The cure to unbelief is truth. Absolutely. Now we saw the Joker card in the film I Am Legend. Remember when he opens up that book? The, the uh, what was it? Not the Atlas. But he opens up the, um, the book and he starts looking up the date of the solstice and it was the winter solstice and he, the placeholder the bookmark is the trump card remember that which is the joker the joker is the trump card by the way so all this stuff seems to connect catch 22 yep that's what they feel they've got us in because people feel like they have to take this thing in order to go back to life as normal. What they don't realize is that life will never go back to normal. And the more you concede, the more they'll take. The jester. Yep. Okay. Alright, you guys. You guys have any questions for me before we... Get off of here. Give some shout outs. There's Blue, Brandon, T. Kerr, Deaf Bread, Homesteading, In the Heartland, Talisha, Wacky Wack, Robert, Dan Druff. That's pretty funny. Eric, Michael, Angelo, Trevor Thinks Truth Matters. Tom, of course, in the mod seat. And everybody else that I don't have time to mention at this point because we could go on forever. But I love each and every one of you. Someone mentioned, oh, okay, it's going by too fast. All right, you guys, um, what am I going to do today? Well, I started watching the 1993 version of Body Snatchers, but it was just so lame. I just couldn't do it. I got through about half the movie. And it's crazy because Siskel and Ebert gave that a four out of four thumbs up back in the day when it came out in 1993. But, and they said it was the best of all the Body Snatchers films, which I completely disagree with. It was actually the lamest one. It almost looked like an 80s film rather than a 90s film. But anyway, I tried to get through it. I got through about half of it. The only difference between the 93 film, really, is that this um, intergalactic virus comes from the, from space but lands on a military base. So the whole thing takes place on a military base. So that's pretty much the main difference. It still has the pods, just like in the other films. But the interesting thing about the whole concept behind the invasion of the Body Snatchers is that they really push forward the theory that planets were seeded intergalactically and that space is real and that we have this creation bouncing across the universe and it's very serpentine in this doctrine i mean it's they call it ping-ponging across the universe through comets and asteroids this is what they teach this is the satanic doctrine of how life was seeded throughout the universe and 
Of course, that's a lie, but that's what they want you to believe. And they often depict this matter, these whatever is seated across the universe is like, um, how do I put this to make it YouTube friendly? Um, what comes out of a man? And they show this in very vividly in some of these, uh, some of these uh, films, you know, they show it in the opening of like the 1978 film and it's clearly, that's what it is. That's what they're showing. They show it like bubbling off of the top of these planets and entering space and seeding all these planets. So I wanted to share that with you as well, because that's a very important part of it. That is a satanic concept. And it's well known that it is too. All right. What else do we have here? Oh, some of you also made the connection about the 14s. We were talking about Osiris being broken up into 14 pieces by Set and put together back together by Isis. Well, that number 14 is actually in the Bible. So what you have is this juxtaposition between Christ's holy bloodline, right? Because he broke that up into 14 piece segments. 14 from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile in Babylon, and 14 generations from the exile in Babylon to the to Christ. To Yeshua. So all of those together equal 42. 42, the secret to the universe. 42 generations from Abraham. Well, that is the correct way that generations reproduce. Through the natural way. Well, of course, the enemy is going to have an unnatural way. And that is the 14 pieces of cloning. And how Osiris was put back together. Through cloning. Do you see... How the enemy always has a knockoff version, a substitute version of what God does that is good. So many of you noticed that. You also noticed that there were 14 evergreen trees mentioned in the book of Enoch. He said there were 14 total evergreen trees. Now how would Enoch have known this in a book that we know for a fact is at least as old as two to three hundred years before the time of Christ is when these copies were dated back to. And this is long before much of the world was discovered where there are species of evergreen trees that have never had never been seen before by Enoch. But yet he knew that there were 14 total evergreen species. So there you go. So another example. Now, what would the trees represent? Well, the trees are much like people. And evergreen trees are a little bit different. Now, we're going to be talking about trees, I think, on tomorrow's show. We're going to look at the birch tree. And there's so much more to the birch tree than meets the eye. How did we come about the birch tree? Well, we started noticing the birch tree featured prominently in many, many of these vampire horror films, zombie movies, it's come up at least two or three times. And I thought to myself, what's going on with this birch tree? Well, we figured it out. The birch tree is used as the maypole for human sacrifice. And we'll get into this in more detail when we decode the passage. But it says here, the birch tree was the center of the Beltane Festival, May Day, the Day of Sacrifice. Now, Bo Jiden was talking about May 1st, wasn't he? There was some kind of deadline for getting a certain amount of people VC'd in America. Well, now you know what this is all about. This is all about the birch tree. And now we know maybe why the Deborah Burks came about. Her name is a variation on the word birch. And of course, the Birkinan is birch as well, and that's the Bluetooth symbol. Now it's all starting to come together. Bluetooth. Personal Area Networks. PAN. So we'll get into all that in the shows later in the week. Yes, there's so much more to the birch tree. There's some other things that I hadn't talked about yet, but we'll go over during tomorrow's show. So, 
doesn't it feel like our channel's kind of stuck? We rarely go over a thousand people watching, which I'm not complaining, obviously. But there's something else going on. Our subscribership has been stuck for the last two months at 95,000 subscribers. That's not normal, especially coming out of major growth. Our channel almost doubled, seems like in one year. We went from 50,000 to 90,000. And now we're stuck. And I've, I believe that that's not... I believe that's not real because the work is only getting better here. So whatever you guys can do to help the channel grow, if you want to mention this channel, you know, we, we get on our channel in the comment section, lots and lots of people always mention other channels. There's a couple channels that I don't even like that are mentioned all the time in the comment section. But so when you're on other people's channels, you should do the same thing. You know, if you like the work here you can talk about, enter the stars on other channel comment section and that will help the channel grow because people will be um, curious and they'll come and listen to the live shows and see that we're doing good work here anyway i love each and every one of you be saved if you haven't already because the time is short the fence is being smashed there is no sitting on the fence anymore and we can see it all around us as the people that we love and know are starting to separate. Everything is separating out the sheep and the goats. It's happening before our eyes in the choices and decisions that people are making about the future and about what they will and won't do. And so what side of the fence do you want to be on? Well, the Bible tells us that, that in the last days, we're going to have our children ratting us out, mothers and brothers and people telling on each other and forsaking each other for the beast. And it feels like we're here right now. So what can you do? You don't have to be afraid. There is no fear. You simply choose the right side and then your soul is protected. And you pray for those who have not chosen the right side. Have a great day, everybody.